Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, viewers from wherever you're watching us from. Is your host Jermaine right here at Wima Sports? And as you know, we are at also Ita Lodge, where indeed guests become family. Uh, speaking of family, today we are talk. We are into the basketball family, and not only that, we are going to have a great, great guest who is a woman trailblazer in sports and she's been doing great, great work with the national team and uh, she's none other than Isiaho Melimu. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, well known as Maxim. Yeah. 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 She's, she's uh, the team manager to Kenya Morans. Kenya Morans is the basketball national team uh, for the Republic of Kenya. And uh, she's an avid sports lover started playing basketball at early ages at Buru, in Buruburu High School, Buruburu Girls High School, and uh, later on joined Kenyatta University where she also actively played, and she got into management of the national team first in 2014 as a member of the de facto National Team Management Board, <laughs> and uh, she got co-opted to the Federation in 2016, uh, she has managed the Kenya Moran since 2018 to date, and I think if you're in the basketball world, uh, it speaks speaks for itself the work she's been able to do uh, with the with the with the entire team and entire management and operations uh, group that deals with that. So she also sits in the executive of the federation. This is Kenya Basketball Federation as a woman representative and supports all national team programs for both the men and women basketball. Karibu sana. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So uh, just to kick us off, uh, last time we did a little uh, introduction on what sports, uh, what sports development is. And uh, I'll just talk about something little on that today as well. Each sports has a development program that is governed by development bodies. And these bodies are based on sports uh, development pyramid, uh, which you can recap from the last video that we did. And uh, these bodies are such as the IAAF for the athletics, there's FIFA for basketball, for football, and uh, FIBA for basketball, etc., etc. And the major roles of these bodies is usually to promote awareness and also to create values of the sport and also to support progression of athletes uh, from the different pyramids of, uh, of, 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 of sports development, different uh, sections of the pyramid of the sports development. And uh, having said that, uh, just to kick us off and break the eyes, uh, Maxime, uh, tell us about your first six years of life growing up in regards to sports or mm -hmm. anything that you'd like to talk about. The first six years of my life? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, the first six years of my life were not very eventful. Um, mm -hmm. I'm the first born of three. Um, I'm, the, mm -hmm. I'm the only girl. So it's basically just life, normal life, no sports, no nothing. It was mm -hmm. just normal child life. I didn't know I had any talent with regards to sports yeah. at that time. Yeah. Uh, so it was just a normal childhood like anyone else who grew up in Nairobi. I was born and raised in Nairobi. I've gone to school in Nairobi. Basically, I've, I haven't left Nairobi until I left for work. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's basically how my life was. So uh, none of your brothers did sports? Or? Um, mm -hmm. We are all into sports. I wow. played basketball. I inspired my kid brother, my uh, last born brother, to mm -hmm. also play basketball. Nice. Um, my follower played rugby. Uh, he played in high school. He played a bit of professional. Then he, he retired early, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we are all sports, sports lovers. We all like sports. We all argue about basketball <laughs> they all push me to be the person that i have been become awesome. today yeah awesome awesome indeed that's a great environment mm -hmm. that has uh, uh helped you come this far and uh <clears throat> what to what levels did you play basketball in buruburu provincials nationals east uh, africa 
as you as you know, bas- Buruburu Girls is a basketball powerhouse yeah. in Kenya. Yeah. In, in, in uh, we all know Buruburu Girls and basketball mm-hmm. uh, synonymous. So yeah, we during my time we played up to the provincial level, provincial levels. Mm-hmm. Uh, on my final year, we lost to St George's. That was a worst game <laughs> ever. <laughs> but yeah, we. Yeah. We were we were very active in terms of basketball, so we played to the highest level in the province. After I left, uh, mm-hmm. the the ones behind me went to nationals all through, and they still go because Buruburu and is very keen on supporting basketball. I think mm-hmm. it's one it's been one of the very few girl schools that have two basketball courts wow. uh, within the within wow. the school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, now that you've come this far, do you get to visit them at times? Yes, yes. Uh-huh. I the coach that coached me is still there. Wow. He also he also taught, taught me biology. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's still there as a teacher. He still coaches. So once in a while, before COVID, I remember I went there to mentor the girls a bit. Mm-hmm. So I still do that uh, awesome. uh, once in a while when I get some time. Thank you, thank you, viewers. Always be keen to go back to. Uh, where I molded you to become who you are. It's always a great way to give back and a great way to support our learning institutions. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, if we've not learned the best way possible during the pandemic, uh, learning institutions have been going through tough times. And the only way we can support is by the alma mater, the alumni, mm-hmm. uh, going back to your institutions and supporting, do what, doing what you can do. Uh, it doesn't have to be monetary, but anything that you can do, any service that you can have, you can change just one person's life just by talking to them. Uh, thank you, thank you, Maxine, for doing that, and I encourage you to keep on doing it. Yeah. And uh, how was college basketball at Kenyatta? Um, it it was okay. I think the most competitive level was the Unikusa University Games, mm-hmm. and we we were sworn enemies with Strathmore Swans <laughs> <laughs> at that particular time. But it was uh-huh. all. all just for the growth of sports it was mm-hmm. fun it was an activity that occupied our weekends yeah. so that you don't get into funny activities and yeah. yeah going to law school law school is a bit of stress so i think that uh took away some of the pressure that came with with going through law school, law school in yeah. kenyatta university mm-hmm. yeah so basketball in kenyatta university was good mm-hmm. the team uh joined um, Nairobi Basketball Le- uh, Association. NBA Association yes, yes. in 2012. First mm-hmm. season, went unbeaten. Mm-hmm. Was, I was part of the team that uh, helped the team to get into the Premier League, it's where awesome. they still it's are awesome. now. Yeah. Uh, so it was a good, a good uh, platform. Shout out to Coach John Waringo. He's still mm-hmm. the coach there. So mm-hmm. it was a good platform for, for for us as as ladies and as basketballers. Awesome. Yeah. If if you could speak to uh, a player in the college mm-hmm. uh, or KU or whichever who is facing uh, difficulties with balancing the mm-hmm. two, mm-hmm. Uh, how how was it for you balancing the two? And uh, um, for you, uh, from what you said, I feel basketball helped you mm. remain sane after yeah. law school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, if there's a player who's really struggling with their grades, mm-hmm. and uh, if you have a word for such players, and uh, who can, how can they be able to balance their academics and basketball? Yeah, I believe uh, in university we all we have been there. We all know that there's a lot of time in our hands, yeah. so you just use that time wisely. So, yeah. uh, have your bit of fun, have your bit of play, mm-hmm. and have your your study time. Just uh, prioritize the things that are, are important to you. If it's yeah. basketball that is important to you, prioritize it and be the best at it. If it's mm-hmm. the the books then prioritize that and be the best at it. But it's all about priorita- prioritizing what is important to you mm-hmm. at each particular time and managing your time well. Because in, in campus, we have a lot of uh, a lot of time because you don't have classes eight to seven every day. Some mm-hmm. days are, you have free days, some days you have half days. So it's just a matter of balancing between all that and prioritizing what is important to you. Okay. Yeah. I, I'd like to take you back just a little bit. 
uh, there's this game that you spoke about in high school that was really tough mm -hmm. and uh, it, it hit you guys hard on the uh, going through or uh, experiencing the loss. Mm -hmm. um, what life lesson did you get from it that has impacted your life to date? Uh, it's never the end. There's mm -hmm. always another chance. Mm -hmm. uh, because we lost, it was the final game, like we were, we were going after that, form fours are not allowed to play after mm -hmm. that, so it was the final game. We cried in the bus, we cried on top of the bus. <laughs> but that does, didn't mean that yeah. it was the end. Yeah. Like we got another opportunity to play more competitive basketball in campus, in the league. So it's never the end, like there's always another chance. So don't don't put yourself down because of one loss yeah. uh, losses and wins part of the part of life so you move forward and yeah you find your you find your space wherever you need to find your space yeah mm. yeah um so so um did you play in any other team after ku yes i played for eagle wings mm -hmm. um I, I played for eagle wings for 2015 till 2018 how yeah that's three years and for I three that time Eagle Wings was also a good team. Yes, right? yes. Uh, yeah, it was a it's a high flying team. Mm -hmm. uh, so I played for Eagle Wings until uh, I retired officially mm -hmm. from basketball. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of retirement, when was this? <laughs> I retired in twenty eighteen. Uh -huh. uh, because of an accident. I had an accident okay. and uh, um, after that accident it proved difficult to go back to play because okay. of a lot of complications so I just decided to hang my boots and yeah so when I wanted to go back the weight had come in and I was like ah no okay. it's it's not so I can't find my space in other other things other yeah things. yeah so uh, at that particular time did you figure out you'll be where you are today or doing what you do no it was was it coincidence it, it was mere coincidence because mm -hmm. um I had I had watched the national team. I had watched other countries, and I was like, "Why aren't we in that stage?" Mm -hmm. So I just started to pen down and organizing some events mm -hmm. that might lead us to that space. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, uh, one of my players in the Morans, Desmond, mm -hmm. he came. He told me the idea. I bought into it, mm -hmm. and just. Co coincidentally or is it by accident mm -hmm. that's just how i started managing the morans we went to the federation we told them that this is the plan we, we drew up a plan from 2018 to 2020 2023 mm -hmm. we told them that this is a five-year plan that we have this is where we want to get our team or teams if both the the teams align to what we, we were planning so yeah, we gave them the five-year plan. Mm -hmm. uh, since I was in the federation, we talked and we agreed, and they said, ah, "Go ahead. If this is what you guys plan to do, we, we don't see any issue with it." And that's how mm -hmm. I came into. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so, so, so just just before <coughs> um, uh, I, I asked the transitioning, how the transitioning was for you mm -hmm. from being a player. You know, uh, being a player. Um, there are umpires, there are uh, federation officials uh, who at times you look up to. Mm -hmm. And now, now you're transitioning to be not in the same level, but you're actually sitting with them, yeah. uh, making basketball decisions yeah. for that's not just the national team, but for the care. country. Yeah. Uh, how, how was the transitioning for you at that particular point? It was tough because mm -hmm. as a young person, you get into a space, you have this energy mm -hmm. that you want to to input and these old people, okay not old, <laughs> the, our seniors yeah. don't really subscribe to that same energy. Yeah. So you still yeah. have to balance mm -hmm. between how you approach the situation to get your point across. Mm -hmm. So it was a bit tough adjusting but once you get to understand each personality and each person mm -hmm. it gets easier uh, with time so for now it's easier but then putting your points across and doing whatever you need to do was a bit tough mm -hmm. but okay yeah you trans you just grow I, I, I say you can grow into you grow into it yeah 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 
So um, how how how's the plan so far? You had you guys had a plan. Yeah. Is it is it working? This was our five year plan. Mm -hmm. uh, we went into the FIBA calendar. We saw the competitions that had been lined up. The first competition was the Afrocan, mm -hmm. Afrocan qualifiers. Yeah. So we said <coughs> this was in 2018. So mm -hmm. in October. So we said we need to be part of the team yeah. that is going to be part of the African qualifiers in July mm -hmm. of the next year. Then we, our, at that time our goal was to beat Uganda, yes, to yes. re-establish ourselves, ourselves in East Africa. Mm -hmm. That was the goal. Mm -hmm. So we surpassed our goal. Yeah. So we went to Africa, now the, the continental competitions for upcoming teams and uh, mm -hmm. what they say. So we said, okay, now this has come. It, it was part of the plan, this has come. So the plan was African qualifiers, African, and then Afro basket pre-qualifiers, mm -hmm. Afro basket qualifiers, Afro basket, then World Cup qualifiers, World Cup. World Cup. So yeah. that, that, that plan, Mm -hmm. In every calendar, in every country, it takes a, a span of, of four years. Mm -hmm. So we started in 2018, projecting mm -hmm. that in 2019, in July, June, July, during the summer, this is what is going to be taking place. Yeah. And this is the position we want to be in at that mm -hmm. particular time. Mm -hmm. So everything we were working on or towards was towards that, yes. that plan. Yeah. yeah. Um, how, how was it uh, selling this vision that you guys had? to the entire team and uh, the, the man team management uh, for everyone to understand. understand and just pursue the goal? For, for the team, mm -hmm. what we did is we, uh, Desmond and, and I, we had, we had been having conversations with uh, our players who are abroad. Mm -hmm. We say that we want to bring Kenya back on the map, re-establish yeah, ourselves yeah. in East Africa. Mm -hmm. So it was easier to to sell that dream to both the players and to the management because yeah. we were like, we are lagging behind. Yeah. We need to establish ourselves in East Africa, at yeah. the very least yeah. in Zone 5. Yeah. So when we told them that this is what we want to do, I think if you if you have something positive to do, only a fool would refuse. Yeah, refuse, yeah. yeah so <laughs> it was positive. Mm -hmm. It was a welcomed idea. And uh, sh shout out to Desmond because he used his own resources mm -hmm. to rebuild this team. Desmond is our, our team captain right now. Mm -hmm. He is based in Australia. Yeah. So he did the groundwork. Yeah. Uh, me, I just helped him managing since he's system, not based yeah, here yeah. the system mm -hmm. so he did the groundwork mm -hmm. so you see if i come to you i say i just want to use this place uh, i won't ask you for money i won't do anything i won't i won't do anything that is contrary to your what goal you yeah so it's easier to convince people to work yeah. that way yeah so we drew a plan this is how it's we drew the plan we had the plan we presented the plan and we had a common goal. I can mm -hmm. say both the federation and, and the players, they had a common, common goal, goal yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is to make Kenya visible again, oh, basketball-wise, yeah. yeah. in Zone 5 at yeah. that point. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I salute you, Desmond, too. I salute you uh, together with the entire team that made this happen. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I mean, uh, you know, we are in a country where people don't give to Caesar what, yeah. <laughs> what Caesar deserves. And, and definitely, you guys deserve uh, lots of salutation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope one day you get to, to have the president's uh, audience. Uh, for, for, for salutations from his office. <laughs> Actually, they have. Awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome. Thank you. So, uh, national team, there's someone looking up to you. Mm -hmm. um, a girl, a guy. What, 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 what does national team management look like um, for someone who would like to aspire to be in that position? First of all, it requires passion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I can say, if you want to 
if your if your goal is to get into this for money then choose a choose another <laughs> choose another yeah. career path because yeah. yeah. uh, money money is not it's not the key thing because it requires a lot of passion it requires you to be uh, very open to new ideas it requires mm -hmm. you to have a tough skin because mm -hmm. you you will get a lot of hate mm -hmm. and that is that is just how Kenya works. Yeah. You'll get a lot of hate, but you'll get a lot of love from other other spheres, Africa and all that. Yeah. So it requires a lot of passion. It requires a lot of dedication. It mm -hmm. requires a lot of prioritizing your time. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's it's not a, a day job. It's not an everyday job. Yes. It's it's a job that comes with assignments. Mm -hmm. So you don't wake up every day and say, oh, for basketball at least, we are not there, there yet. For rugby, it's different. For athletics, it's, it's different. Mm -hmm. For them, that's a full-time job. For us, it's not. Yeah. And we are not there yet. We hope to get there someday, mm -hmm. yeah. but not yet. So you require to prioritize your time and know what what uh, you, 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 you set up an, an, a goal. Mm -hmm. And just know that two weeks training is not enough to go to any competition you know not you not have the, mm. the the confidence of of oh now we are we are a good team yeah because yeah. when you leave this country everyone is there to win no one is out there to lose yeah. and and other countries have been doing it for a long time mm -hmm. for us going into uganda was easy mm -hmm. uh, we, were, we, were, we were we were all all over the place mm -hmm. going into <laughs> mali it uh -huh. was tough because now you meet other african uh, players who have been doing it mm -hmm. the whole time they yeah. already have a culture you're mm -hmm. trying to establish yours a, a culture, yeah. so it's it's tough for now for so for the person who will come after me it's a bit easy because you already have an established culture yeah. people know kenya but go, for us going going in it was a bit so yeah yeah um so so uh speaking of culture uh what would you like what message would you like to give um players young players mm -hmm. who are looking up to get collapse from the national team uh, what what should they do? Uh, what 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 are some of the things that you look at or your your team looks at uh -huh. uh, when recruiting such players in terms of work, in terms of training, in terms of fundamental being fundamentally sound and, mm -hmm. and all this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you just have a word for them. For me, in management, <clears throat> I do not look at the technical aspect. So if you see me in a game, mm -hmm. don't try to outshine yourself, beat people up because <laughs> TM is here. No, yeah. for me, I look at the personality, your personality. Does it fit into the Moran's culture? Mm -hmm. uh, what what uh, do you push yourself? Uh, what is your work ethic like? Uh, your listening, your listenability. Mm -hmm. How are you a coachable person? Yes. Those are the things that we look at. If you want to shoot ten threes, and we have that—that's not my bit. That's the head coach's bit. Yeah, yeah. But for me, I look at: Can this person be managed? Yeah. Can this person listen? Can mm -hmm. this person be? Uh, can I present this person? Because the national team is an avenue for people who want to play pro. Yeah. It's an avenue, and it's important for you to play for your national team because that is what gives you legitimacy to mm -hmm. play outside this country. So you cannot, I cannot be calling you to the national team. You don't show up on time. You don't do all those things, and you expect me to sell you to an agent. Mm -hmm. uh, a few days ago, I was talking to an agent. And he was telling, I presented a player mm -hmm. and he told me, hands down, this player, like I'm looking at the stats, he's not there yet. He mm -hmm. needs to go back to rookie. And this, this is a player who's hitting 26, he's being told, you need to go back to play rookie mm -hmm. before, you play rookie some few seasons before you can at least play pro. Like you need to go to a lower league mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. you can. And that's, that's where true. I think most of our players are, we... We are at the rookie stage, mm -hmm. but are we learning from what other African players are doing? Yeah. yeah. Because that's and those are examples that we can see. They are they are reachable. So are yeah. we learning from from such? Yeah. 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 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. So how was your first assignment like? It was scary. It was very scary. I can imagine eh? yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because um, my first assignment was scary because I managed both the ladies and the men's team. Mm -hmm. So it was scary. And it was just one year, barely a year after I had stopped playing. Mm -hmm. So the balancing act. So you're trying to please everyone. I still oh, want yeah, to be good yeah. cop yeah. and yeah. bad cop at the same time. <laughs> so it was, it was scary. Uh -huh. I had a lot of mistakes, uh -huh. but you learn, you learn yeah. from them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, two years later, you got co-opted into the federation. So, what led to that? To you being co-opted? Oh, in 2014, mm -hmm. I was called to be part of the defunct uh, national team mm -hmm. board in 2014. So, the team was going to Uganda. Yeah, so I was part of the board uh, doing stuff. I wasn't really, you didn't really have a JD. You were just doing what you were being told to mm -hmm. do. Uh, I think with that work and the dedication, the Federation thought it would be best to yeah. co-opt me into the executive gotcha. because you vote for nine people mm -hmm. and then they are co-opt. Is it three? Yeah, they co opt three. Okay. So I was part of the people. I think also recommendations from coaches and mm -hmm. people, just people, because, yeah, it was just a recommendation. So I was co opted into the Federation in 2016. Mm -hmm. After the 2016 elections, uh, Mr. Tula called me, told me that we would like you to be part of the executive which i accepted mm -hmm. and i have been there since 2016 mm -hmm. even the last the last election i was now uh, i didn't vie for any seat but i was uh i was uh, is it nominated, nominated to yeah. be uh, a woman representative in the federation because mm -hmm. the constitution says that there has to be two yeah so there's two of us for gender parity yeah and and what not yeah yeah so so there's always one thing um, um, we don't get to understand a lot mm -hmm. and uh, this is you know opportunities come yeah but are you prepared and ready for yeah. that opportunity that's that's true like uh, all these opportunities came mm -hmm. so how did you prepare yourself for for such such opportunities and high high ranking levels you 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 be available mm -hmm. Be available, that's one, and be ready to learn. Yeah. Because you don't know anything. Mm -hmm. You know how to play basketball, but you do not know how to run basketball. Those are two, two different, different things. things yeah. So be available to learn. Mm -hmm. That's just what I can say. Be available and be available to yeah. learn. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. How was the last assignment for you? <laughs> Surprisingly, uh -huh. that last assignment uh -huh. was one of the most stress-free assignments that uh, okay. I have ever had. I don't know if it's gross, mm -hmm. but the, the players were cooperative. Mm -hmm. uh, a few hitches in funding and government and that, that's, yeah. that's normal. Yeah. This is yeah. Kenya election year, we understand. Yeah. Um, but they still came through. We really thank the government. They always come through. Mm -hmm. Since 2018, we've, we've let me just say basketball, since 2018, basketball, we've never experienced those stories of Kulalakwa Airport mm -hmm. and not being kitted, mm -hmm. allowances. Since 2018, technically, we haven't yeah. been in that space. Yeah. Uh, and that's a good thing. Um, so the last assignment was okay. The game just didn't work. Yeah. The game didn't work. In February, the thing about February assignments and what people don't understand is that all our international players who play pro only get 10 days wow. off from their yeah, usual from, assignments. From their usual assignments. Yeah. So you only get 10 days off. So it's even mm -hmm. difficult to bring the team here For to training. train. Yeah. And it's also expensive. Yeah. So imagine someone coming out of Australia, you're bringing them to Nairobi, then you take them to Senegal, you bring them to Nairobi, then you take right. them back to Australia. Mm -hmm. You see how hectic that and how many days that takes? Yeah. It already takes... More than... Yeah. So the assignment days are three, mm -hmm. but you only have 10 days. That yeah. includes travel, training, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. So it was difficult yeah. for us to get all our players 
in the, in time for for that assignment yeah. in february last year because of the of the pandemic and all that most leagues were not very active so it was <clears throat> easier to bring in team players uh, <clears throat> from wherever train and those who couldn't come we met there <clears throat> but this time all leagues are active yeah so it's a bit difficult to 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 have that so for other yeah. teams uh, I fly from most teams uh, the teams <coughs> we play with mm -hmm. Senegal mm -hmm. most of their players play in France yeah F France is a is it six hours flight to yeah. to Dakar yeah as case we travel 14 hours from Nairobi to Dakar mm -hmm. so you can just imagine so it was it was a difficult assignment it was a difficult position but the team did the best that they could have done at mm -hmm. that particular point yeah. 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 Zam Egypt, that national team is basically Zamalek. They mm -hmm. all play locally. So yeah. it's easy for you to do whatever you need to do to very do fast. Because they're available. They're available, yeah. yeah. So the assignment, the game, yes, we had we had hard games. It was tough. Mm -hmm. But in terms of players being doing what they were supposed to do, the players did what they were supposed mm -hmm. to do, yeah. That's and right. I appreciate each one of them That's because right. it was it was easy. Mm -hmm. Contrary to what people think, it was a bit easy, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. How any preparation so far for the, the coming second leg? Yeah, we are. And we are wh when is it? The second leg starts in uh, July. Mm -hmm. We play on July first, second, and third. But we have to leave the country at least uh, five days before, mm -hmm. so that we acclimatize. Because it's Egypt, mm -hmm. we our. You see, you, we, we when we train, we our altitude is a bit higher than in Cairo. So if we train here in Nairobi, then you go to Egypt, two yeah, days yeah. acclimatization. Because mm -hmm. hey, it's 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 interesting. So those are the things that even coaches need to look at. Okay, mm -hmm. how, uh, where are we playing? How yeah. is the weather? Yeah. Those things. So as guys, usually we go to Ngong Hills to run. I think you've seen videos yeah. of yeah. Moran's uh, preparing at Ngong Hills. Oh, yeah. We are starting preparation as of next week. Uh, mm -hmm. Next by next week, first week of uh, first weekend of May. Mm -hmm. uh, with the local base players, we've incorporated some of the younger players because we want these younger players to get into the culture. Yeah. Because there are very many competitions. I will not shock you, mm -hmm. giving you your first assignment to take you to World Cup qualifiers. Mm -hmm. That stage is too big. Yeah. But this African, mm -hmm. the cycle starts again. This African, this Afro basket pre qualifiers and all that. Mm -hmm. So the cycle starts again. So you need to be ready mentally yeah. for those. So there's no way I'll pick you from, uh, let's say, an estate and bring you to the national team and then the next stage is a World Cup. World Cup <laughs> Even for you mentally, that will mess you up. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, we start training on the first uh, weekend of May. And we, for us, we believe that uh, two months training is good enough to have by the time the uh, pro players start coming in at least you uh the, you have the correct fitness because then they are in active leagues now yeah and very competitive yeah. so by the time they are coming in gelling of the team is a bit simpler simpler yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, are there any programs you have or you have in place uh for growing and developing the national team uh yeah. you just mentioned one where you're trying to mm -hmm. get young players uh get into uh, the system and understand the culture yeah. and uh, just go through the process preparing them for the yeah. other mm -hmm. uh, assignments that are coming ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any that you'd like to talk of? Or? Because of the pandemic mm -hmm. and schools, you see what people don't understand is in Kenya we have a very interesting schooling calendar. Mm -hmm. So um, for the U8, there's a U14 league that, mm -hmm. that, that started last year, it was launched last year. Mm -hmm. So we monitor these kids from U14 from, from last year. That's, that was the plan to monitor these kids from U14, mm -hmm. see which high schools they get into. Now, as the Moran's head coach, uh, he has an idea of going into schools. Cliff, our uh, coach is yeah. Cliff, yeah. he goes into schools 
to at least have a training with some of these schools that do good in basketball so mm -hmm. that we have the culture inculcated into these kids from yeah. that yeah. from that point because for you uh, 18 the only point you can get them you 16 you 18 is at school mm -hmm. and then now you move to kusa you come into Kusa, you look at the, co uh, you talk to the coaches, you also try to inculcate the same culture. Yeah. So by the time these U23 <coughs> kids are coming into the national team, mm -hmm. there is a culture that is already being established. Being established. Yeah. So it's something that we have planned in progress. It hasn't been there. It's something that we are starting. So mm -hmm. for now, what we are doing is, what I've told you, incorporating these young players into the, into the national team. Mm -hmm. And then once the pro, pros start coming in, we also have a lot of friendly matches so that we see who stand out, yeah. who needs to work on what. Because yeah. we started, uh, we had a program, it was called Rising Stars in uh, December, where we had a lot of university kids coming in to train with the national team coaches yeah. mm -hmm. then. And you could notice that some, most of these kids don't even know how to go for a left layup. Their left yeah. layup is so so weak. So, weak. Mm -hmm. so those are the things we, we, we tell you that you honestly, you need to work on your left layup because mm -hmm. we do not, as Kenyans, we are naturally not tall. Yeah. Other countries are privileged. So we have to use our strength in speed and you have to be fast on the dribble or on both hands you have to be strong and you have to be fast yeah yeah because if angola can do it the angola and kenya have the same uh, physical if angola can do it mm -hmm. i think kenya can get there and also get there yeah and uh, how's how's the attitude been for for such players that you just talk to directly hey, you need to improve on this and this and this uh, do you get to monitor and see if there's an improvement or yes we do mm -hmm. uh, i'm always I think I'm one of the person who's always at games because I want to see if I told you Jamey, work on your left layer mm -hmm. and I get in and you're still doing I'm, I'm like you then you have an attitude problem so yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm so, sorry I'm sorry <laughs> uh, yeah we we can we can't work like this because you yeah. you like I said you have to be <clears throat> teachable you have to want to learn yeah. to be in the national team because you get pro pro players who'll come and tell you that and they, they won't tell you the way Maxine yeah. is telling you because it's in the heat of the moment and it will be like you go for that left, left layer so how will you take it? If I told you nicely and you didn't, what about if a, a, another player who's played in the highest level comes and tells go for left layer in a manner that is, you, you see, so you have to have an attitude that, oh, she said this, she must have seen something. So, yeah, yeah and it helps that I played. So at least I know one or two. So I can tell you, yeah. So I think that's it. The greatest life lesson uh, this far you've come Greatest life lesson, yeah. apart from Morans the world. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Morans the world. <laughs> um, um, uh. You can find your space. Mm -hmm. Find your space and own it. Mm -hmm. That's just the greatest lesson. If it's in, if it's in refereeing, find your space, own it. Mm -hmm. If it's in start skipping, find your space, own it. If it's in whatever space, mm -hmm. Uh, the, like I, I've said in one of my, on my post, the, 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 the space for sports is so big. Last year. It's so big. We have mm -hmm. sports lawyers, sports doctors, physiotherapists, nutritionists. Mm -hmm. If it's your niche, find your space on it, on it. and be the best. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Find your space and on it, viewers. Find your space and on it and be the best. Speak to a 19 year old on this camera. Mm -hmm. 19 year old, you. Anything that you'd like to speak to a 19-year-old? Uh, <laughs> don't go out, Kushla. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, 19-year-old um, me is just, don't beat yourself up. Mm -hmm. Life will happen the way it will happen, and well, the way it's destined to happen. So just work hard and focus, mm -hmm. and let life take its course. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. We are on to the quick fire segment. Oh. Which is your best recovery equipment? Water. <laughs> <laughs> Hydrotherapy. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Your best sports documentary? Uh -huh. Oh my. I don't watch sports. You don't watch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your best sports athlete in the world and why? 
ay 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 my best Okay, I'll have to see my friends from Africa. <laughs> For me, honestly, it's, okay. it's, it's Carlos okay. Carlos Morais from Angola. Mm -hmm. Simply because this guy has has been everywhere. He's played with with uh, Kobe in the World Cup. He's he's played in every platform in this that Africa can give. Mm -hmm. He still came back and he still uh playing strong so for me uh we he's not even my friend but i admire his agility his whatever he does mm -hmm. and how he keeps his body fit how he keeps it together mm -hmm. how he mentors his team yeah and brilliant leadership yeah brilliant mm -hmm. leadership uh -huh. i just admire uh, mm -hmm. that for me i really shout out african players because i feel like we need to start Yes, sir. The African yeah. narrative. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, LeBron is great, but I need an African. You need an African. Yeah. Speaking of Africa, your thoughts on BAL? Oh Are my God! <laughs> <laughs> BAL is a welcome. Uh, it's welcome. It's a good platform. I I love what they are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, they are going into the playoffs. It's gonna be very amazing. I've been a champion of BAL. If you follow me anywhere on yes, social yeah. media, you know <laughs> that I watch the BAL. I mm -hmm. because I have gotten to know a lot of these players. I've gotten mm -hmm. to interact with them, understand them, know their stories. So I really mm -hmm. like the direction that the BAL is taking. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Solo Diabate, that is mm -hmm. one of the African greatest players who plays for US Monastery. I hope he wins in Monastery. Yeah. He's a champion with Zamalek, he moved to Monastery. Monastery. So I mm -hmm. really hope he wins. I, mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping to be there for the playoffs, at least for some few days. Mm -hmm. um, let's watch uh, first game, uh, Stanley versus Petro. Yeah, it was. Yeah, Petro must win that game. <laughs> Uh, speaking of uh, BL, are you looking to manage any team in the BL? If the opportunity comes, I'm ready and I'm ready to learn. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Let's do this. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't take it for granted. Uh, uh, shout out again to you and uh, the entire team yeah. who has helped elevate the level of basketball in Kenya for mm -hmm. the past couple of five years or so. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been brilliant basketball. I mean, uh, plays like Taylor's play, the clutch plays oh, and, and all yeah. those things, all the things that we've only seen in, yeah. in, in the US or mm -hmm. other foreign leagues, but our very own yeah. can do it. And this is just to inspire young people who are coming up. Uh, just just go out there, uh, look for that space, as mm -hmm. she said, it, mm -hmm. and own it. If, mm -hmm. if, if your space is a, sh is a shooter, if your space is a point guard, if your space is a forward, you just go there and own it and, and, and give us your best. Mm -hmm. Give us your wow moment that we'll be able to think. I, I mean, in Kenyan basketball and Africa, I think no one will, will ever forget uh, Taylor's clutch shot. <laughs> yeah, I think you should put it in, in case they forgot, you should yeah. plug it in. We'll plug it in, we'll plug it in. <laughs> yeah. uh, thanks, thank you once again, I appreciate so much. Yeah. And uh, it was nice viewers having you as well here at Wimmer Sports, uh, brought to you by Eastex Services and Supplies. And also we are here at Osoita Lodge, where indeed guests become family. You need to come visit here and see what they offer. Really, really great foods, really, really great African foods. And not only that, they have a wellness center that is coming soon. So stay tuned so that you can get plugged in. Until next time, it's your host, Jamelo Diambo. See you.